Right, okay, good evening everybody. Um, this is uh, episode three of that weekly football show. Um, today I've mentioned midweek on a couple of my videos that this week I've got a Newcastle fan on. This is Dan, the Newcastle fan. Um, Dan, I'm very, very lucky that Dan agreed to come on. I did say um, last week I wanted to speak to a Newcastle fan um, to, to discuss how Newcastle fans feel right now. Um, they're lucky. It's, um, but yeah, anyway, so, so we're going to have a chat with Dan. We've got some topics up here, just, just uh, ideas of topics. We're going to look at last weekend's games, VAR, uh, big topic VAR, Newcastle, Woo! European Super League, and this weekend's fixtures will finish on okay. So, let's get going. Right, so here we go, part one, guys. We're going to have a... Little look at last weekend's games, there's a reason why I've left that up there, but before we do, Dan, if you want, do you want to let everybody know who you are, how long you've been a Newcastle fan, since um, the takeover, something like that? I, um, <laughs> I've, been, I've been a Newcastle fan since last year, Glory Hunter Supreme. <laughs> now, you can probably tell from the accent, um, I'm born and bred a Geordie. Um, if, you, if you're born in Newcastle, you, it's beaten into you to just grow up and support them which for the last sort of 15 years or so has been an absolutely miserable experience, but obviously the last 18 months or so has been pretty damn good, it's fair to say, like. Um, Lucky. So I, very, very much looking forward to having a chat with Nick and, uh, and talking through all the positive yeah, parts. Yeah, all the positive parts of, of how you guys feel, yeah. Yeah, and we'll get to that. That's, um, like I say, it's up there. That's the reason I wanted a Newcastle fan on. I'm very lucky Dan come on because I want to know how it feels. <laughs> Why can't it happen to us? Uh, but yeah, before we get into that, um, I've left on this week. You will see. Um, the last few weeks, I haven't, I haven't done this. I want to look at last weekend's games, and there's a reason why I've left that up there. And and the main reason for me is, although I want to start having maybe a little chat, and we'll we'll maybe talk about things we might have seen at the weekend that that are interesting. That maybe there was a few shocks. But one thing that, that was a little shock is, but if you look down here to the Sunday games, I predicted 3-1 to City against Villa, and 2-0, Man U against Leeds. I mean, come on, that's some predictions, that, isn't it? Put your money so, where your mouth is. Yeah, I wish I did, I wish I did put my money on it, to be honest, I didn't, but um, yeah, we'll see at the end. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to, what we'll do, Dan, we'll have a look at the, the games this weekend and see if you can beat me there, see if you can get more than two right. Um, but yeah, do you know what? Guys, what I will be doing, I think, is having a little, or maybe putting a little dabble on, a, on whatever I do this week. So, um, yeah, a few good predictions. There you go, last week. So, we have a look at the weekend's games. Were there any, any little shocks for you or anything like that? Um, so, the biggest one for me, I think, was Leicester beating Spurs, um, which just seems to be coinciding with Madison's return. Ah, uh, yeah. How, how good is he, though, Madison? He just, I've got, I've got that down there, so it goes on to the next page. We've got... Madison, 25, um, 25 minutes, goal, his goal, he, he took it well, it was it was one that was laid into him quite easy, and he did, he did slot it, but he took it well, but he, he just controlled it, didn't he, he just was... It's <sighs> just every game for them, yeah. when he's on, he's just, he's the difference yeah. maker, yeah. he's just, he can create goals, he can score goals, he's just... His ability to just pop up in the right positions, firing goals from distance. Yeah. How air Madison get you selling a black and white shirt soon if you're watching this son. He said that is is there rumours that he wants to go up there? There is it depends who you speak to, but there yeah. is strong, strong rumours about it. There was something really funny actually when he was away with England. Yeah. And when they were doing some of the like the fan the fan media stuff and everything, Connor Cody was was taking the piss out of him a bit and he basically said Who's going to win in the Boxing Day fixture, Newcastle or Leicester? And Madison started laughing and was like, come on, mate, you can't ask us, you can't ask us that, you can't ask us that. And I'm just thinking, he's got to be our So, that a little, so you, you think that if, if there was nothing there, he'd be like, Leicester? Leicester, was. obviously, yeah. yeah. I might be reading too much into it. I probably am because I'm desperate for him to sign. I'm from, you know, all the rumours... Back, back home are like, the hierarchy are really, really into him. Like, yeah, so, yeah. fingers crossed. Have him in there next to um next to oh who's your guy in the middle? Um who's your midfielder? 
the Howard Grima- midfielder, Grimares. Bruno. So have him, him in there next to Gamares. That would be yeah. That would be some midfield, wouldn't it? You'd have you'd have Bruno, Joe Linton, and yeah. Madison in the midfield, or you could stick him in the right hand side because Almiron's goal spell seems to be drying up a bit yeah. now as well. Yeah. He's been yeah. definitely he's had his purple patch. I don't know whether or not it's time for him to sort of come out a bit, make way for a player like that. But I he can play both positions. Listen, he's I I agree with you like. Madison and yeah, perhaps it is. Perhaps it is that they he's back. Leicester they they absolutely destroyed them, to be honest. They, yeah. They destroyed them. Ben Tanker's goal, um I watched what just match of the day, you know, didn't watch the full game but match of the day. And it was kind of a lucky goal anyway. It was kind of something that dropped to him. He started it, he took it well. He's now out, I believe, again, Ben Tanker for a long period of time to the end the season. For the yeah. season, which is which is bad for Spurs, like but other than that I mean, you, Leicester just Leicester just took them apart. Yeah, you would never have seen that coming because well, they've just been they're just a wildly inconsistent side. I think really. Um, which one? Because both of them. I'm, oh, geez, yeah, both. When you teams. say yeah, both Leicester, of them. Leicester in particular, I think, are just you know some weeks they're just getting battered, they look yeah. like getting battered, yeah. and then yeah. other weeks you know they're turning in performance like that. So yeah, yeah. What can Something you do? to grow on that, isn't it? Tell you what, we go um, from the. From the top down quickly, West Ham, Chelsea. I mean, obviously, Chelsea are struggling a bit, aren't they? They've spent that absolute fortune. I said last week we went over, um, last week or the week before, sorry, I went over transfers. 323 million in the transfer window, and all they've done since is, is draw. And they put, they've got them on as well, you know, they put these these guys are on the pitch. Um, there was a shocking VAR decision, but we'll get to, we'll get to VAR in a bit because that's something I want to. I want to discuss, um, but yeah, I think I just think Chelsea are, are struggling. They look good. Yeah. They look good. The the past few games they've looked good to watch, but the creative, they, they're just creating stuff. Just doesn't seem. I think I think it's all a bit disjointed because you know the free flowing football and stuff is Potter. That's what he's always been about. Yeah, the Brighton yeah, and everything. Yeah. The Brighton did also tend to lack that cutting edge and you yeah. can put that down to the personnel. You know, Danny Welbeck as the striker couldn't mm-hmm. do better mm-hmm. there. But I think I think the biggest yeah, thing is point. they've spent all this money, they've signed all these players, but they've still got like a Bamayang as the only number nine and he's just he's well past his habits, isn't that great? So I think there's a personnel issue right at the you know, having that focal point for them. But I just think they've got too many players too quickly. They're rushing them all in, and that's why it's more disjointed. They can play the football, yeah. but I think that that's why they cut. I think they've given them no time. They've given them no time to yeah. to work together or anything. They were straight in. Exactly. It was I think that Enzo Fernandez had signed like two days before they had their next game, and he was on the pitch. He was like straight in. Exactly the same with Felix as well. Yeah, Felix. Yeah, he got sent off his first one as well, didn't he? He did. I. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, Mudrick's been straight on, but he's one. I think he looks the top player, uh, that Mudrick. But um, Arsenal, Brentford. Surprising one. Yeah, dropping points again. Um, Arsenal. I said, I, so I put this up with, I think I did add it. I did add it at the bottom, didn't I? Wednesday's game, very bottom. Obviously, Arsenal got beat last night as well. Um, Three one, so they're on there twice. One one draw. They so they picked up one point in two games. They're no longer top. I don't believe. No, um, they're not. So I said last week, you know, the and I was with Ben. Ben disagreed, the Liverpool fan, because I said I don't think Arsenal are going to win the league. Um, I think they dropped points already. They lost two in the run. Then one was in the cup. Fair play against City. But I just seen that the, I seen like you know a little dip, and I could see I was like, I think they're doing. I think they're doing an Arsenal. Um, it's typical, isn't it? That's yeah. just quite standard, I think. I think of Arsenal, and certainly like without wanting to take everything back in Newcastle. But that game, I watched where we drew with them nil nil. Arteta's just ranting and raving on the touchline, yeah. very close to be sent off. He just looked like halfway through the season, the pressure's getting to him. Yeah. Um, Drawn against Brentford's not too bad a result, as surprising as it is, because Brentford's record against the top six this season is is outrageous. Listen, they're, they're a good team. Yeah, they're a good team. I'm size. sure I heard I, on match of the day. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm sure, I heard they're on like a ten match, um, not winning streak, but um, ten match 
no loss. What, what how, would, how would you say that in a better ways? So what, what, <laughs> I, what I would say is I would twist it ever so slightly because that might well be against the top six, you know, the big six. Mm -hmm. However, Newcastle are currently sitting fourth. The game of Tate about Newcastle, terrible. But we thrashed them 5-1 at St James's Park. When was that? Um, was that, not that, long was, that was back in November. October, November time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they must have had, oh, mind you, maybe not 10 games though because we had the break for the World Cup, didn't we? That's it. So, I mean, against the traditional top six teams, you know, your Liverpool, Chelsea, Man U, Arsenal, City, um, I think they're on a bit of a, I think they're on a bit of a, a yeah. name, um, like, you know, a, a, a streak of not losing though. Brentford, they're, they're definitely doing, they're the, doing well, aren't they? are having a great season. They're, Them and Brighton are having a great season. Yeah. They're probably the two biggest surprise packages, I think, so yeah, far. Agree. Yeah, 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 I agree, they, they are, yeah. Yeah, Brighton just, Brighton, obviously that's the next game, Palace-Brighton. Brighton just, are just a tough team to play against, aren't they? Just so well organised and they just seem to go for it as well. They're just, just a good team. Yeah. Just good team mentality. I say team as well, I emphasise team, because... I wouldn't say Brighton fans don't go mad. Um, <laughs> I don't mean this to respect, I promise, uh, to any to any team. But I wouldn't say they've got any special players. Um, no. Although, wasn't there that? Is that where you've that's got, Caicedo? You've got plays? Caicedo in yeah. the centre. You've got McAllister in the centre as well. Oh, Loads sorry. of people seem to be raving about McAllister. I've got, got, to, I've got to be honest, up. I... I, I'm, I'm in I'm in the minority. I know I'm completely in the minority. I just don't say it. I just think like his his record in the Premier League. He looked phenomenal at the start of the season. Don't get us wrong. He looked brilliant. But and then he went to the World Cup. And granted, he's won the World Cup in a great side. But I just watch him. Yeah, and, yeah. No, you got that in it. Which is right in a great side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You could. I, you, ugh, this going over the top, but I could have probably gone on that side and still managed to win it somehow. Um, you know, it's. Yeah, I, I get your points, I, and I'm I honestly you say minority. I feel the same. I don't I don't exactly watch a Brighton game and think wow he is he is so special. And nobody Mine. come in, nobody come in from either did they? As far as I know, nobody what sorry? Nobody went in to like buy him. Nobody tried to. I think Chelsea did. I think, did I think Chelsea. Oh, okay. I mean, who who weren't Chelsea interested in signing? Yeah. But I'll tell you what. Actually, one player just remembering him um, who is absolute quality. And he's, he's just looking like prime Salah at the minute is Matoma. Okay. He yeah. looks phenomenal. Um, first game he came on in the Premier League was this season against Newcastle, nil nil draw. Brighton battered with, but we managed to come away with a result. Mm. I've never seen anybody terrorise Kieran Trippier this season like yeah. that Matoma did. Okay. And now he's just now he's sticking the he's sticking the ball there in the back of the net. He's getting the assist. He looks like. Hell of a player. Okay. He's going I'll to be keep, worth I'll a lot keep, of money. I'll keep an eye. I'll keep an eye on him. Is he? How old is he? Is he younger? Uh, I, th I don't know for sure, but I think so. I think he's twenty four, maybe something like that's that. Someone I've picked up. Maybe so okay. Maybe. Yeah. I'll keep an eye on him. Definitely. Um, coming games. So and that's good. Like I say, that's what this show's all about. I said you haven't got any good players. You reel off three straight away. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, Fulham Forest. Now that wasn't a surprise to me that Fulham won that. Um, Fulham again. Another kind of. Surprise! We just said absolutely. Um, we just said Brentford and Brighton, haven't we? But again, Fulham as well. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Having a great season. William is on fire, isn't he? He, he looks good. Did you see his goal at the weekend at all? No, I didn't. I haven't uh, seen the goal. Do you know from what? The he he kind of steps in. He's on the right. He steps back in and past a couple of players, and he's kind of the edge corner of the eighteen yard. And slots it right round. It's just it was a it just an amazing goal. Really yeah. good. He just looks. He's really he's really turned their season. He's he's, he's a technician. Yeah. I think William and one of the biggest things I like about him as well. He puts the graft in as yeah, well. He does, yeah. he proper yeah. puts the graft yeah. in, but he's a proper technician of a footballer as yeah. well. He looks like he loves it, doesn't he? He yeah. looks like he just loves football. You know. He and do you know what? Um, where was it? Was he at? Uh, was it when he was at Arsenal and he had just agreed with them to terminate contract when he could have, he could have like put dog his heels in and said I want paying yeah. out, and he just agreed. So I think that also shows the the person as well. Like say he just yeah. just wants football. No, I want to go. It. I just want to go and play football. Um, you know. So, but he, uh, I think was he free as well? Are you getting him for free? I would. I don't know for sure, but I. I 
I don't, I I don't recall them ever paying money for him, I so I would, I would suspect that. I could so. check that out in a bit, or tell you what, let us know guys, drop us a message if we're wrong, but I think they got him for free. So, I don't want to stay on this too long, let's, um, let's nip down, yeah there we go, Wolves, Steph will go to uh, Southampton Wolves. Southampton are done, I think. I think they're done. Yeah. I think they're done. And I'm sorry Southampton fans, but as an Everton fan, I, I you are. Know, um, that just just being dead honest here, you know, I I you know because that means there's only two two more spaces um, left to go, and I just hope uh, Evan on one of them. But I think Southampton, you know, one 0 up, um, falls for down to ten men as well. From from like it was early. Yeah. It was early, and Southampton, I think they were already one 0 up. Yeah, they were. Wolves go down to ten men. In the and first then pulled half. it back, and Nathan Jones came out with an absolute blinder about. Again. Wolves again yeah. about Wolves being down to 10 men helping them because then it completely took the pressure off Wolves and it allowed them to I'm go sorry. on to win the I'm game sorry. I was to say he's that. bonkers but he's yeah. gone now so. no wonder when he, when he said that because the, the week before didn't he, he come out saying uh, oh, I was ridiculous I've I've let the, I've let the boys down and all this and it was just a bizarre something about so, women in Wales I said to nah, yeah, he's, just did, a, he's off his rocker he's I, think. Off, I think they were just like he only had he only had eight games, eight games, and they were like, "You're off, mate." Yeah. But eight games, he'd already lost the fans, and with with those statements that he made, I think they were like, "What? What have we? What have we put in charge here?" Yeah. No, exactly. I think if you if it's one thing to be losing games and not getting good results and whatnot, but if you're attacking the fans and you can't get the fans on side, yeah, you, you're going nowhere there. Yeah. You're only going one way because. Yeah. You, you need a bit of confidence, you need Cause. something to lift you in the stadium. Yeah. And yeah, they're uh, they're looking in dire straits. New manager might yeah. change it, but new, new manager only might. do that so often. Yep. Your boys, Bournemouth, Newcastle. Now now they it was a one all draw and I that shocked me. But I will tell you, when I um got Dan's contact details was Saturday. Um just after I'd been to the Arsenal game and no I hadn't. Yeah, no, because we didn't play last weekend. I, no, I hadn't been to a game, sorry. Anyway, um, anyway, um, I spoke to Dan. This was the R5 game on Saturday, Bournemouth, Newcastle. I spoke to Dan not long before that to arrange this. And I said, I need your boys to do us a favour today, to do Everton a favour, and do one over on Bournemouth. And I think you will. Dan's response was, I wouldn't be so sure, you know, I think it could be a draw. One or draw. What made you say that? Um, so this is now after this result. That's five of the last six we've drawn. Right. Um, so we've drawn against Leeds at home. We've drawn against West Ham at home. Um, we also drew against Palace away as well. Palace are quite a difficult team to break down. Not surprised at that. I would have expected us to be Bournemouth more, but at the same time, we just. We just don't look like scoring goals at the moment. Mm. We're missing Bruno. That's a massive factor. Yeah. Well, he uh, He's suspended. So oh, it's suspension. It was yeah. suspension in the League Cup game against Southampton. So okay. um, that was his second game missed. We've got Liverpool on the weekend. That'll be his final game, and then he's back yeah. for the Carabao Cup final against Sorry, United. Bro. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so all of all of those factors. Mate. Was it all of those factors, or was it just the point you were like, we're just drawing every game? So, I think it's a combination of the kind of results we've got. Um, we seem to just be in that bit of a bit of a lull at the moment, but in this lull, we're not losing games, which is a positive. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing is we just don't we just don't look like scoring. We we had a bit of a cutting edge at the start of the season. Wilson was really on form, and Wilson was looking great. He seems to have dropped off the boil a bit. Mm. Almiron was as well, though, didn't he? He didn't cup, play yeah. that game. He yeah. was injured. So yeah. Isaac had to come in after a good he's while. Out. Office, and he's really. In and out. Yeah, I think he's a player who'd thrive off like a running running games on the side, but I, I don't think, think he's, he's a, a great player. You know? He's a fantastic yeah. footballer. He's yeah. not a striker in the same mould as Wilson, who's yeah. just an out and out finisher. Yeah. Um, but he'll certainly be the link up, I think, between when we've got two proper wingers next season. Almiron was going through that purple patch and he was scoring goals, so you couldn't not have him in the team. But I've got to be honest, I always thought that had a bit of a short shelf life. Really? Um, I think with a, with a couple of top class wingers either side of Isaac, I think that'll be where the goals start coming from mm -hmm. next season yeah. if we can if we can do that business in the summer yeah. or the following season. Do you know season. the one you got unlucky with though, Isaac, wasn't he, where there's injury? Like you missed him. 
although I say missed him, still right up there. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Maybe he could have been better further up there though. So, so anyway, so that didn't surprise you. Bournemouth in trouble. I think they're a solid team. Um, I'm not just saying that off the back of this result. I think Bournemouth play quite an attractive brand of football. I think Gary O'Neill's done a really good job with them so far. I don't think results have always been perfect, but I think, I, I was going to say with the players they've got, I don't think the players have got are particularly great or more than just not as well known, but I think he's got them playing quite quite a cohesive style of football. That's it though, they don't, as we all know from the, from the Leicester winning the league time, they don't, a team doesn't have to always have superstars. No. They just have to be a team. Yeah. Uh, you know, they just have to be a fully functioning team. You get that right, you go in places. Um, we'll finish this section off. We've got Leeds nil, United 2. Um, I think that was just on that. Surprise, no one, I think, does it? Nah, Rashford's on Rashford fire. Rashford again. Just Rashford again. Sickening. I hope um, he gets injured before the final. <laughs> go on, Acho. He's a great player. And yeah, he seems to be getting touted quite a bit. A few mm. times I've watched him, he looks quite handy, but I can't think there's just too much faff around him too soon. I'm just getting fa I'm getting vibes of Federico Makeda again. Have you ever watched, did you watch um, Peaky Blinders? Yes. One of my mates sent me a message the weekend when he scored. Went to United 2-0. And uh, he said he was scored, he put Tommy Shelby. <laughs> and he sent us a picture, like, he does look like he does have that look. That, uh, <laughs> I, that need, slick, I need to have a look at that. That's like. slick, hey, look. Um, City 3, Villa 1. Again, no no shock. No shock there. The back. The uh, back. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. They are um, back up there, back on their throw. And as we'll see, getting down. Um, Monday night, Monday night, Liverpool 2, Everton 0. Do you want to skip that section? Yeah, skip that one. Um, I was there. If you haven't watched it, I did do a video on my experience of the game, which was crap. Um, but Liverpool were Liverpool were good, good enough to do exactly what they had to to keep Everton well out of the game, well out of the game. Um, so yeah, let's get that. <laughs> and uh, well done, Liverpool. Whatever. Um, and then last night's game. Um, City. <laughs> uh, so were subtle, so subtle. Liverpool were good, honestly. When yeah. I was there watching it, um, there was there was just a point where I was sitting there, and I was sitting in the Liverpool end as well, and it was all right. But you've obviously, you know, there was no no kind of animosity or anything towards us, but they're all singing Liverpool song, and it's right there, all around you, and you're like, oh. and they were all singing at one point. Um, Oh, what were they singing? Something like, you can't get the ball, you can't get the ball. You come here Monday night and you can't kick the ball, something like that. And do you know what? I was sitting there watching it thinking, to be fair, we can't get this ball off them. So, yeah. um, and that's what they did to us. They, they did that. They made us play the way they wanted to play, the way they wanted the game to go. And it was unlucky. But I've I seen um, a few reports saying Everton brought down to earth and all that. But I don't see it that way. I see it that going to Anfield is tough for it's tough for Man City. It's tough for us. It's tough for any team. So it's no you know for Everton to go there. Liverpool are just lost well. They had to prove something. So I think that it just it just didn't bring us down to earth as in it made us realise we are still rubbish this that the other. We've got Leeds and Villa coming up. We win our home games, which we're fully capable of. I think on the dice, and it's back. You know, it's back where. Hopefully we should be well. Yeah, I think a derby game is always a difficult one to draw that many conclusions from, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, um, and yeah. although Liverpool haven't had the best season, um, they're, they're also the only team that have beaten Newcastle this season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Shithouses. Wasn't it wasn't a fair goal? <laughs> 98 minutes, 95 added on. Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. I'm not, I'm still not bitter. Honestly. You're not over it. You're not over it. Nah, I'm I'm still annoyed because I I go to every single game. Yeah, you say yeah, yeah. I'm living down here. I go to every single game at Anfield. I go yeah. to every single game at Goodison whenever yeah. Newcastle. Yeah, whenever you can get there. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was that was a proper because every time I've been, it's been in the Ashley era. I've been you know I've just been expecting where to get tongued. That's just how it works. That's absolutely fine. That was the one time I've went where. You know, 60, 70 minutes in, I'm thinking, 
bloody hell, this is nice. Like, we're going to go away. We're going to get a result. Like, and then that happens. Yeah. But I, you know, they've got the players. That this is this is the key thing. They might not be having the best season, but they've got the players that can make a difference. They just need to upgrade that midfield, they've, and yeah, they'll be yeah. back. They've that is um, that is a, a spot on point because what they've got, they've got players that can change a game as Everton seen in seconds. We at the post, they scored. I think it was something. Somebody told me thirty six seconds, but then I had twelve. I think twelve would make more sense by the time it didn't take Nunes long to get up there. Yeah, get it over. It's so, a great assist that yeah, like, but yeah. what the fuck was Pickford doing? I don't know. I don't know. Dinosaur but, arms. Yeah. See what? See Cody for the second goal. No. Uh, do you know what? Didn't. Anyway, we're on City Arsenal. <laughs> uh, forget it. Forget it. <laughs> it's gone. Um, City Arsenal, like like we said. Um, look at that. I've got them the wrong way round. I've got Saka scoring for City, and yeah. Never mind, never mind. That's all right. We're, mistakes, we're, we're, we're mistakes on this show are going to be regular, so get used to it, okay? We can um, work it out. Yeah, so City, um, De Bruyne, Grealish and Haaland do play for City. Um, you know what, I think, that, I think Haaland might be a, an autocorrect, but anyway, like we said, City, City back on top. City looked good last night, really good. Um, and there we go, back on, back on their throne. That's it's a top. Is that the turning point at the top, do you think? Yeah, yeah, I do. I agree. I do. I think that'll give City, its players, its fans, its management, everything they need to say, we've got this again. Yeah. Let's go. Let's let's crack on now and win this thing. Yeah, agreed. I mean, Arsenal have still got the game in hand, so they could still potentially go three clear. Of course. City have got... Ten above them on the goal difference, yeah. but you just can't you just can't look past City and you just can't ignore Arsenal's history of no, of no. just tanking when they go and gets tough. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah they're in. Yeah. yeah, it'll be an interesting race for the title, but I wouldn't be surprised. Could be wrong, um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see City just start to pull away now. I wouldn't be surprised to see Arsenal drop a little further down, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I do you know I actually hope not as well. I I'd like to see obviously coming from an Everton fan, we're down here. So if I look at the top, none of them really mattered to me that much. But I'd just like to see a change. I'd like to see Arsenal go and win it. Um, maybe Newcastle wouldn't bother me too much. I'd like to see um, that. Even United, it it just likes to be a change because City just City rampant. Yeah. And at the moment, they're potential, potential alleged cheats. Um, so, you know, it'd be it'd be nice for somebody else to to do it, but you know. I've got to be completely honest. I'm not reading up on anything to do with that at all. I for the simple reason that I just don't think I don't care what anyone says about points docked, relegate. It won't happen. It won't They'll happen. pay a fine and it'll move it on. Won't happen. That's just. So I some of the I got a few suggestions because I say you know I cover topics every week and a few people said you've got to talk about City you've got to talk about what's going on and I said on last week's show I don't want to talk about it yet because I don't there's not enough about it you got to see how it what what transpires out of it what what comes through it um, and there's a bit of me that hundred percent agrees with that it'll come to nothing yeah it'll come to nothing um, rightly or wrongly I my honest my honest view and opinion is, if it was Everton, we'd be stuffed. Um, that is honestly, that's my honest, my honest opinion. Well, it depends. You got the money to to pay them off, you know. Yeah. And, um, that's, and that's why and that's that's why I see it. Yeah. And yeah. City are, you know, the part of the kind of like the cartel, if you like, the part of the big six and everything else. The, the Premier, the Premier League. One one thing more than anything that I, I know this firsthand. They will do anything to protect to the brand and keep the top clubs happy. Yeah. Hence why they delayed our our takeover for so long. Yeah. Whether you we're agree with get... it or not, but that's that, the crack. That I love I love, we're gonna we'll, we'll touch more on that when we talk about this European Super League, because I think that's a big point. Yeah. Right, we're gonna end that um we're gonna end that part one now. I think you need uh, another uh, Newcastle Brown. So we're gonna end part one now. Two minute break, get on to part two. It'll only be seconds for you. Right. 
Okay guys, so there here we go, um, part two. Uh, I just split them up into parts, it makes it easier for you to watch as well, because I'll, I'll put it, you'll have seen, I'll put on the um, the thumbnail in the description where what minute you can catch each part, so makes it easier. Makes it easier for us to grab another beer as well. I've got the new Castle Brown in here today, for uh, especially for Dan. Looking after yeah. the guests, looking after the, the guests there. So, next section, VAR. Um, I put this up there, Dan, because I just wanted to... I want your opinion on on what what you think what what do you think of VAR first and foremost what what's your what's your opinion? So I think I think VAR is the right thing to have. Okay. It's absolutely needed. I just think the officials controlling it are the problem. Yeah. Um. So first, so first of all, there's an issue around timing. It sucks. You know, that's a big issue. It, there's timing of it. It sucks the fun out of the game. All that kind timing of stuff. Timing is in how long it takes. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, it, it is bad sometimes. But I just think at the same time, like you've got you've got to make sure you get things right. And at the same time, this whole rule around kind of. Out. We might need to edit this out because I think I'm tripping a bit, really. Go on. Um, right. So I, th I think essentially the issue around it taking too long and this whole rule around we've got to overrule a clear and obvious error is there's too many clear and obvious errors, or there's too many that are kind of, you know, somewhere in between. And for me, the biggest problem is the referees are not doing the job and they're allowing VAR to do the job for them. Yeah, the yeah. amount of clear-cut penalties that aren't being given and then are being given by VAR, it's just not right. They're just waiting to be overruled. And let's remember, uh, let's remember that, that when it was first brought out, it was the, the, the golden statement was they're only supposed to overturn something if it's a clear and obvious error by the ref. So that would that was so that should be surely the first part that they they look and really quickly is it really obvious that that's an error? Well, no, because it could have gone either way. So exactly, bin yeah. it off ten seconds, fifteen seconds, yeah. or whatever. But you've got to have numerous angles as well because I have seen quite a few decisions where they just stay focused on the slow mo of what angle, and you know slow mo's can be misleading, especially when it comes to sending offs. I think yeah. everything looks worse when you slow it down. So as football fans, we we know that for a fact. How many times I've had arguments with my mates when they, they've said something, say an Everton player's done, they go and look at this, it's disgusting, it's a photo, or it's a, if it's slow-mo, and we're like, yeah. come on, you know, that's not how it went, because he, he went in, you know, it's quicker than that, yeah. and it's, it, the context is wrong when you're sending it in real slow motion, or just a still, which shows his studs may be high or something, you're like, that's a still, it was... You know, it studs when I for like a, a split second or exactly. something. Exactly, it's a freeze frame of the moment, and yeah, it's just embellished. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so I've I've just put my my thoughts on VR are, are, are almost the same. I think it's I do think it's needed because I think how many times in the past you know the, the past I'm 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 not going to say my exact age, but for the past say thirty five years when I've been really into football, um, I'm watching it. How many times? before VAR, had we screamed and shouted at, at how bad some decisions actually were. Like, I've seen, I've seen offside given when the lad's like three yards on, and vice versa. I've seen onside given, no flag go up, when the guy's about five yards off, you know, they replay it on the TV and you're like, you, yeah, how you, do you not see that? You've so, seen goals given when the ball's clearly, uh, sorry, goals not given when the ball's clearly past the line. Clearly past the line. The technology is needed because the let's need support. Let's look right back. Let's look right back at a dead obvious one. Let's look right back at Maradona, handball. Yeah. Let's and I know technology is obviously it. That's 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 going real extreme because technology is not even there at that at that time in in, in um, history. But let's just say it was. Let's just use that as a massive example. Yeah. That's no goal. No, exactly. Look and at I, Lampard's goal against uh, Germany. Against Germany, yeah. yeah. Needed goal line technology there. That would. have turned the game on its head as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think ultimately it is needed. The technology is needed because the referees need support. The fact that they can't get it right with the technology is just telling that they are shit. Yes. They're just not yes. they're just not so, good yeah. enough at the job. So we'll look at I just I've done a couple of examples, but before we look at that, um, because because you've just um come up with that, we've got I've just put down John Brooks this is just this last week, John Brooks and Lee Mason. Have both been dropped. So they, the referees, both dropped for VAR. Um, John Brooks was dropped for the Liverpool Everton game for denying Brighton a perfectly good goal for offside, um, and admitted it was a mistake. 
Lee Mason dropped by Premier League for coming games for not giving a Brentford offside against Arsenal that allowed the Brentford equaliser. That was a bad one. Don't yeah, it was. They, they were two offsides. Yeah, he didn't draw the lines, did he? Didn't draw the lines and then forgot to even look at the second one, which was the the most recent play before the goal. So he looked at the one at the edge of the box, but not the one where uh, Nor Norgard is it? What's, what's his name? Norgard. Yeah. Norwood, yes, whatever, Norgard. Yeah. Who, who heads it back in? I thought I think or kicks it back in for Tony. Um, shocker. So they get suspended for a short period. But then the button back in again, and it's just the same, the same old shit over and over. I just, I just don't get it. How as professional officials, they can constantly get it so wrong, and genuinely, the only thing I like, what one of the key things that I think back to, and this is like tin file hat on, and that is ex Premier League referee Mark Halsey came out and made a public statement saying that. Back in the day, referees were getting basically lobbied to make certain calls and give certain decisions and everything else. And, you know, who knows how true that is or isn't. But I think if you're getting paid to do that job and you're that shit at that job, let's let's be real, yeah. Like, I, I just don't, you know, if, if we as, as football fans can, can see things, you know, from a view of impartiality, we're not talking about, I'm not talking about Newcastle, you're not talking about no, Everton. No, no, no. You're talking about... You know, completely Football neutral games. games. Yeah. How you can continuously just keep getting that so wrong yeah. week in, week out, just blows me mind. So I just, I just don't see I, what the I, excuse I is. I can't, I can't agree more. And I think there needs to be more. They're saying they've dropped for a few games, like you just said, and then they'll be, then they'll be back in. That's it's totally unfair. Yeah. If there should be harsher punishments for them if they get it so wrong. You look at this second one here. Um, Lee Mason dropped by the Premier League for coming games for not giving a Brentford offside against Arsenal. That allowed the Brentford equaliser. Let's nip back up here. Arsenal would still be top. Yeah, yeah, with the game in hand as well. Yeah. It would be massive for their mentality. It would have been massive for the for going into if the this game was, against if this City. Was the, if this was the last, if that was the last game of the league, they'd have just lost the league to City because of Mason. Yeah. Who, who comes out and admits it was a mistake? Yeah, and one thing I will say, fair play to him at least for coming out and admitting a mistake, because most of them just don't even bother their arse to say anything. They just hide behind the fact that they don't need to give any statements or fair anything enough. like that. Fair enough. Um, one thing. But I why not admit it's a mistake and say I admit to it? I admit it's a mistake. Um, I'm not going to officiate VAR. I don't. Mind you, is that it, or is he then quitting refereeing? Because I think if they, I don't know what the rules if, are. If, they if, got to. Do VAR as part of the remit or? Yeah, yeah. I, th I, th I just don't think there's a straightforward solution besides just fucking get it right. It's to a tough job, isn't it? I mean, I don't think any of us will say it's not. I I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I mean, I wouldn't be fit enough to run the line for a start. Like, <laughs> Neither would I. Mate. Uh, Neither that wasn't my reasons, but I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't want to be a referee. No chance. No, I do. I do think from a view of impartiality, some things are just so clear cut but they just still can't seem to get them right mm. um, how many times have you sat there watching watching it whilst whilst they're trying to make a VAR decision and you're sitting there going it's obvious it's clearly obvious yeah. he's offside he's about three yards why is it taking this long it should have been about seven seconds to make that decision go he's offside yeah Yeah, I think eight, eight out of ten VAR decisions are Honestly, probably like that yeah. to be honest yeah. um, I actually think one thing which is even it comes under the kind of like the, the VAR umbrella, if you like. But one of the things that pisses me off even more is the offside rule. Yeah. Um, okay. And the fact that the lines are so thin, and there just seems to be a real inconsistency. There just seems to be a, a bit of inconsistency there in terms of how they're drawn and what they've said they were going to do with the thickness of the lines and stuff. And to me, I feel like just like I made the point about penalties before, yeah. and the fact that refs don't want to give them, they allow VAR to give them instead. I personally think that one of the biggest things VAR are worried about is games becoming rugby score lines, you know, and too many goals. But that's what makes football exciting. Yeah, we want to yeah. see goals. Yeah, we'll, we don't yeah, want to see yeah, nil nil and yeah. oh, the referees made a cock up and he didn't give a penalty and the game finished nil nil. No, we want to see goals. If things finish 2 2, 3 3, 3 2, 4 3, most games. Fucking great, you'll get more match of the day subscribers and everything else. Like, it's just. 
when you mentioned rugby, then about rugby school, I I like it. I think it would help. You know, on the rugby, when you watch it, and the NFL, um, you see that when it goes to the um, video referee, the ref on the pitch tells, up, yeah. tells you what's going on, so the crowd can hear it. You know, he's he's saying, "Can you have a look at number number nine? I think number nine's handballed in the box, and you can hear it." And I think I, what I think that would be good for for us fans to to sit there knowing like what he, exactly what he's asking for. I think that's the a hundred percent the right thing because I've just basically you know keeps you involved as well. It keeps you involved, and you know I I've just made the point about what Mark Halsey was saying. Then it it, it leads you to think you know is there something more sinister going on here possibly as well? Because surely you're not that incom. I think if you if you add that layer of transparency. Then like he could, no he could be saying in the ref's ear, like, yeah, he's offside. And the ref goes, "Is sure?" I don't think he is. And he's yeah. like, "Yeah, I've got a bet on him to to to, to score." <laughs> so he was offside, all right? So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, uh, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but you know, VAR, everybody agrees, it's uh, it's inconsistent. I put there, is it needed? Yeah, I think we both agree it is yeah. needed. Is it making things worse? Right now, honestly, I think it is. Um, right now, I think it's needed. Like you said, it's, it needs to be right though. Yeah, I think it's just... I think it's just highlighting the incompetencies of the officials that we've got. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what we'll do, um, going through the season, and Dan, if you don't mind, at some point I'll have you back on, but what we'll do, keep an eye on from now. Keep an eye on some VAR decisions, and we'll have we'll see if we maybe have another yeah. another chat about it. Yeah, yeah. So VAR is it needed? Absolutely. Is it inconsistent? Absolutely. Does it need to change? Absolutely. But how? Thicker Just lines. Thicker lines. Thicker lines. More goals. A bit more transparency on what they're actually discussing. Yeah. In my opinion. Um, yeah. Let's move on to part three. Let's get going. Right, okay, everybody, part three. Um, it's going to be Dan's best part, I'm sure. Part three, we're going to have a chat about... Let's scroll back up, we scroll down. Let's have a chat about your boys, Newcastle. So, the uh, reason why I wanted a Newcastle fan in is to... I want to know, I want, I want to know how it feels. Um, like I said earlier, um, Everton had this, this kind of... Um, this kind of carrot dangled over us when, when Mashiri took a, a big stake in... We went out. One of our, our first buys was um, was was that man Sigurdsson, um, the man who's disappeared off the face of the earth. But but yeah. So obviously, if if we don't know, if if anybody doesn't know, Newcastle in October twenty one, Newcastle were were purchased from Mike Ashley, um, who was not Newcastle fans' best person, I believe. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Um, so he sold the club to a consortium. He was the Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. RB Sports and Media and PCP Capital Partners, that's a mouthful. All of 305 million. So that then turned, if we don't know, look at this, this turned. This is Premier League clubs ranked by owner's wealth, and I, I'm hoping you can see this, but we've got right up here Newcastle with 620 billion. Next down, just, just to give some perspective, Manchester City. 22 billion. 600 billion difference. How does it feel? You tell me, since, so, since October, since all this happened, and what's it been like? I can tell you exactly what I was doing when the takeover news broke. Do it. Um, I'm interested. So I was, at me, I was living at my mother in law's at the time, I was having some work done on the house, and the official, I'd heard about it like a day or maybe two days beforehand that it was moving forward. This was after the whole Saudi had paid off Qatar. Yeah. The Premier League were ready to sort of accept it and move forward because that was ultimately what was holding up the deal was the Saudis' piracy or alleged piracy of um, being sports in Qatar's um, Premier League product and okay. everything else. That, okay. that was the kind of, the makeup of the whole thing. That was thing. a stumbling block. Yeah. Okay. Um, so once that was taken over... Um, I was living at my mother-in-law's, went downstairs, went into the wine fridge, got myself a bottle of Prosecco, shed a couple of tears and drank Did wine. you? Oh, I, I shed a couple of tears, I'm not ashamed to admit Honestly, it. Like, yeah, it yeah. was just, 
I'd, I'd went was it was it was it really apparent then that Newcastle have just officially become the richest club in the world? There, there was that. The, that that was obviously the biggest factor. But I'd I'd accepted this. Eight, I'd accepted it eighteen months before it was happening, and the whole ordeal of the takeover and everything else. That eighteen months I that it see, took. I That's to, where the tears come from. It, because it was that. And the biggest thing was I was getting fed a load of information, however right or wrong or whatever, through certain people that were close to Amanda Stavely. Mm. Um, that I, I think I think Amanda Stavely, she just she was desperate for the deal to go ahead. You know, she'd tell anybody she she could, especially in the media, that the deal was going ahead. There were certain things being leaked up north that were obviously finding the way back to me. And it was just for 18 months I'd been strung along saying, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Doesn't matter what you hear, just keep the faith, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I'd, be, you know, I'd been trying to speak to my mates, my mates were like, you're a fucking idiot, you're yeah. so deluded and everything. Yeah. And it was just that whole ordeal, you know, where, as, soon as, the, as soon as it happened and it was official, it was on the paper, it was just, it wasn't, I've got to, I've got to be honest, right, it wasn't genuinely to do with being the richest club in the world. Yeah. It was Mike Ashley going, that's right. the biggest thing, like, yeah. It's yeah. just massive for us. We've been strangled. Bled it dry, didn't he? Bled oh it dry. yeah, we've just been strangled for so long, and I know we're going to touch upon it a little bit later as well. But this is also part of the reason why everyone go Newcastle are going to sign Mbappe, they're going to sign Haaland, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. That's the reason why we can't do it because Mike Ashley strangled us on the commercial side of things for years and years. We've had limitations on sponsors. Um, you know, whether it be shirt sponsors, sleeve sp- sponsors, ground sponsors, because we've had Sports Direct plastered all over the stadium for however many years, he didn't pay a penny in commercial revenue. So while all the Premier League clubs have been soaring and they're taking all that money, Newcastle's income has just stagnated compared to everybody no else's. Just deals. Exactly. And that's the issue now why... We can't spend the money that people expected us to spend, and why Eddie Howe continuously talks about Cause FFP. FFP, FFP would just exactly. be, they'd be all over you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I wonder how quickly they can they can turn that round though. Um, like us, like I say though, that's that's just it's massive. I suppose, like you say, being the richest club in the world, it doesn't doesn't mean that much because, as we know nowadays in this day and age, they you're not allowed to go out and. And spend it all. Just then go right. Let's get let's get Mbappe. Let's get Messi. Let's get this. Let's get that. It, it can't happen no. because the FFP. Um, they could have. They they've missed the boat now to to even try and do a Chelsea and get players signed up to ten year deals and stuff because that's going to finish in summer apparently. So um, yeah, that's they, right. They've missed they've missed that boat. But still, look. It's gone. We looked before at the table. You you're fourth. Yeah, you've drawn a few games. You're still fourth. Oh yeah. You're in a league final, so um, a league a cup final. Sorry, yeah, league cup final. So, like, that's I I did look at your I might still have it up somewhere. I looked at it, but I looked at the last say ten years seasons, and you were like down in the championship, back up straight away. Yeah. Um. Then there was it's been there and there about bottom half, hasn't it? Um, mostly. Yeah, cons- consistently. We had we had like one freak season with Pardew where we finished in the Europa League in like yeah. 2011, 2012. Yeah. Um, and then the following season we nearly went down because that was just again typical Ashley. All right, we'll just start selling the players that have made this possible, and we're not going to bring anybody in because ultimately the ambition under Ashley was just finish seventeenth every season, keep the Make Premier money. League, keep the Premier League money coming in, and keep Sports Direct being shown in the Premier League for a pittance. That was Mike Ashley's amb- ambition mm. for mm. fourteen years. Yeah. Hence why he's fucking despised in our parts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been good for you, hasn't it? Like I say, I wish we ever had a dangle, and you know, you you just the stuff stuff dreams are made of. I think. Yeah, I it, think it, I'd, I think I'd have shed a tear, shed a tear because I, you know. Yeah, I mean it, it. It feels that way at the minute in terms of what dreams are made of, and I would say we are wildly ahead of schedule. And to the point you made before about you know teams can't just go and spend now because of FFP constraints. You're absolutely right, but at the same time as well, it does it doesn't mean everything because 
you look at all the money Chelsea are spending now, just to use that as an example, yeah. and it doesn't, you know, short term obviously, but it doesn't really seem to be doing them any favours. You know, you've got a yeah. disjointed team, team they're trying to do too much too soon. Man United have spent so much money on so many players, whether they're good or not, they've just spent so much money. They've spent more Des- than City, I think, over the last decade. Yep. Yep. And they easy, just easy. can't get a coherent team together. Yeah. And this is the biggest thing. It's the infrastructure inside it that makes it tick. Um, Dan Ashworth, that we've brought in as the um, director of football to sort of oversee everything from the academy through the reserves, through the first team and everything. I think Eddie Howe, Eddie Howe. will come on. Obviously, he, was, he was on the tip of my tongue, Eddie Howe. He's just a... He's a football, he's a football and philosopher. I can't speak any more Proper highly manager. of that man. He's Proper manager. he's up there. Short short days, sorry, early days, but he's up there at the moment. The way he speaks about the club, the way he's integrated with the fan base and with the city and everything, he's up there with with Keegan and Bobby Robson's I wish, stature. I wish Everton would have got him um, a few years ago. We jumped from manager to manager, as you know, and when he went from um, Bournemouth, wasn't he? Was yes. I, I, I've just raised him. I always raised him, and I just wished we'd have got him from it. Like you say, I think he's, he's a proper football coach, football manager, the way they should be, integrate with everything to do with the club, fans from the fans to the infrastructure to everything around it, the community. They just know how to communicate with the with everybody and get everything ticking. and then that all bleeds down into the team, and the team's, and the team's performance. And he has got he has got those lads firing, like he really has. Because yeah. they haven't, you know. I was just I was going to touch on the the signings, and because I don't think for for a team that's a, that's suddenly become the richest in the world, you haven't gone you haven't gone mad. I think I, I get what you're saying, like that like you you couldn't because FFP might have been all over you because of the how you've been let down with the with the previous owners. But still, you still haven't gone, you know. Before okay, Gordon is second there on forty five million signing, but he only signed like like a few weeks ago. So before that, you had Alexander. Um, you say Isaac is it? Isaac, Isaac, yeah. Isaac seventy mil. Um, so is your dad. Bobman, thirty seven, and after that, it's it's really, it's really nothing. It's. I mean, if you, it's not just the, the values. I think it's the players. Mm. When you look at the players' names as well, Matt Target, Nick Pope. Yeah. Um, that that is a great deal. I mean, sorry, 11, 11. I think, I think there's a couple of missing there as well because we've is got there? Uh, Dan Byrne from Brighton. I'm just trying to think back to that January when we stayed up. We brought in Bruno, Dan Byrne, Matt Target. Oh, I drew Bruno. Oh, I must I'm, have I'm, right. this, oh, Do you know what? Arrivals 22 23. Yeah, it's only this season. Isn't oh, it? of course it is, yeah, because Matt Target was My a bad. from Villa originally. Mistakes on this show may happen. My um, bad, and as a Newcastle fan, I can't even remember the five players were signed in January. Atrocious. No, don't. No, okay, so yeah, so this is only this is only um, this season. This summer, yeah. uh, but obviously we're missing Bruno Gamares. You brought him in. Um, who else did you say? Dan Byrne. Dan Byrne, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's okay. All right, there's there's but still point remains, people. Chris Wood, as well. There we go. There's another one. He's not very good. Um, He's yeah. I'll say and the your other strikers as well. We were talking about before. Callum, Callum Wilson. Yeah. So this so this is the, the the big thing for me. And again, it just comes to Eddie Howe and speaks volumes about Eddie Howe. So the players were signed in January, with the exception of Bruno, are not world beaters. No, no. Chris Woods not a very not a very good striker. Um, Callum Wilson is. Callum Wilson's a good striker. He was injured all the second part of last season when we that's went from un- that's just when we went from twentieth in the league and finished tenth at the yeah. end of the season. We done that with Chris Wood leading the line. Um, Do you know, what, when you touch on that, um, sorry to, to interrupt there. Yeah. This is what when I say, how does it feel? There's a big reason why why I say that. Right, is because around about the time you were taken over. Um, you were you were down there fighting with Everton. Oh yeah, we were dead and buried. You were down there fighting with Everton. Um, you had, we then played you shortly after. Uh, we we played. I think I think actually what what happened was you were you were taken over in the October. So obviously there's no transfer window or nothing. You had to you had to make do with what you got. Yeah. You then had the January. I think that was when you brought in like to Bruno. 
um, must be, was that January yes. 22, yeah? Yeah, it was, yeah. Bruno, um, just a few of the others. Bruno, Target, Byrne, Chris Wood. I think there was some, there was somebody else as well. Was Wilson already with you? Yeah, Wilson was already okay, there. Okay, okay. So what happened was then, after that period, so it was like an exciting period for Newcastle. Oh, Trippier. Kieran Trippier. How the hell did I forget so, Trippier? So after, after this exciting period for Newcastle where they brought in these players, it was the first time the Newcastle been able to spend any money. Any money. They still didn't spend loads. Who do they play next? Everton at Newcastle. Aye. And honestly, they were, that, they, they were down there with us. Beat us 3-1. Beat us, beat us sensationally, to be honest. And the, the crowd as well. So when we were there, it was on the TV. When we went there, um, when I first I turned it on and I just I just heard the excitement of that crowd, I was straight away like, we're going to be lucky to get anything here. And, and we didn't. And since then, since that game, you've just gone. We just hit that yeah, yeah we just hit that trajectory our, our form of the second half of last season just purely going off one half of the season to that half of the season would have had, had us finishing in third place would it and then yeah we made a couple of additions in the summer yeah and then going into the world cup that oh, halfway that point in the season yeah we were third in the league yeah um and yeah it just looked like we were just we're two continuing we're that. two we're two and a bit months on from that now and you're still fourth yeah um and in a cup final and in a cup final and we're doing this, you know, the, the names that were reeling off, with the exception of Bruno and to an extent Trippier, they're not world beaten players, they're just bog standard Premier League players, a lot of them. Target is, um, who looked phenomenal before his injury. Burn is, um, you know, who I don't particularly rate, but he, I, sacrilege and I, big Geordie lad, loves the tune, you know puts the shirt on and gives everything for it and that like so you can't you just can't ask for any more than that but then moving away from those guys to the players we've got now um who were already there so you've got longstaff almiron callum wilson fabian shea joe you know linton. joe right joe linton what he done joe, to linton. joe linton jesus christ i could wax lyrical about that bloke forever joe linton joe linton send it to messi he's just what's Nobody's ready to have the conversation. He's he's one of the best centre mids in the world at the minute. Nobody's ready. Well, I say this tongue in cheek. If he could score goals, he would legit be up there because as a ball carrying midfield destroyer, fucking hell, midfield he destroyer. is just outrageous. Like, um, I I just he he went from being couldn't even get in the team. He couldn't get in the team. He was probably the focal point of all of Newcastle fans' anger at the time was when he? Ashley was there. He really was. He was just taking the brunt of it. You know, £40 million pounds were signed him for and there was all sorts around just, he was only signed as some sort of dodgy agent favour. He had no business being in the Premier League, no business playing for Newcastle. And Is he playing out of position though? Centre mid, yeah. He was brought in. I mean, he was never an number playing, nine. Now playing like wide, is he? Uh, he's, playing wide, he's been playing a couple of games out wide recently, but how brought him into centre mid, and that was where he really, really that's, excelled. Yeah, okay, that's what I mean. Yeah, so he's, yeah. he's now he's now in the in centre mid. Centre mid slash left left yeah. midfield. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, okay. He is. He has looked good. I say he turned into Messi because that's me and me and me uh, my friends on our WhatsApp group. Um, there was a few months ago now. One of my friends, uh, Mark, who donated this top by the way. Thanks, Mark. Um, anybody else wants to send me tops? I've got to wreck someone on the way. Just getting that in there. Uh, somebody sending me a wreck someone to get up there. But anyway, um, you ain't Mark. Text a uh, good few months ago now. And he just put, since when did Joe Linton turn into Messi? What's happened? And and honestly, since, so, since that message was when I then started paying proper attention to him and looking at him. And I've, I've been like, you know what? What has happened to this guy? Yeah. I, I, I put it down. So I was like, is it because all of a sudden there's money there and all some of these guys are, are now like I've got to play to, to get the money but it's not it's got it's they always want to play football it's the it's the coaching isn't it it is and, and I think specifically in Joe Linton's case if you want to go quite in depth with this when Bruce was there everything was everything was shit the players weren't training because Bruce just basically couldn't he lived in the Midlands he couldn't be sorry he lived in Cheshire he couldn't be asked going up to training so they only trained three days a week, were wildly unfit. Players were really frustrated. Did they really? Is that oh, true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
were not training under Bruce at all. Like, three days a week. Three for days Premier a week we were training. Play. Yeah, because wow. Bruce couldn't be off. So a lot of the players were having to do their own their own routine. Joe Linton wow. basically went and hired a video analyst to compile a load of tapes, um, and specifically to work on his pressing intelligence. When to press, where not to press, because that was the big thing for Premier League strikers in terms of you know pressing from the front foot, and that was where Howe came in. And that's how his philosophy to a T. You know, that's the reason why Newcastle's defence is so good. Not just the defend the defence and the goalkeeper, and don't get us wrong, the phenomenal. The entire team are a cohesive defensive unit, starting from, you know, Callum Wilson at the top. If you honestly watch a Newcastle game and watch how much running Cal Callum Wilson does. Um Almiron on the right speak you know, most people are aware of it. Almiron does all the bloody running, phenomenal. Joe Linton's been playing on the left a lot, keeping San Maximan out of the team because San Maximan is a defensive liability, to be quite honest. Whereas Joe Linton will do that running. You've got to be, you've got to be doing something right to keep San Maximan out of the team. He's a class player. Let Let's be honest. He's a. Do you think he's a he's a um, luxury player though? Is that what you're saying? Because if he do, if he's defensive, if he's a defensive liability, surely that turns him into a bit of a luxury flair, doesn't it? I'm, I'm going to get splinters of me arse on this one. There's no right or wrong answer with San Maximan. Yeah. But my personal view at this point in time is he's finished as a player at Newcastle United. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll take him. Everyone will take him. Primarily. Bagsy, primarily. Bagsy San Maximan. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell, take him. <laughs> Use the Gordon money and buy him. Like, <laughs> seriously. Know. That's gone, trust me. As Everton fans, that'll be, that'll, just... be, that'll be dug in with the Arteta money yeah. somewhere. That. Um, Okay, that's that's but, that's good. That's really interesting to hear from a Newcastle fan. Yeah, yeah. he's he's finished. Um, do you know you must have? Sorry, keep it. No, no, go on. Do you have like a um? You know, you obviously talk to you know, the mates of the Newcastle fans. Do you all do you, do? Is that a general consensus with Newcastle fans? Do you all kind of think like that, or um, just, just just you? Like I say, there's no right or wrong answers. A lot of people I speak who have the same kind of viewpoints. I was seeing to fluctuate from game to game because you know how fickle football fans yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, the, the first leg of the League Cup semi final against Southampton, he came on and he looked like his, you know, he looked like his usual self, as people outside of Newcastle often see him. Yeah. The game against Man City, where we drew three three, was absolutely phenomenal. Was prime San Maximan. But the biggest issue with him is. He's so inconsistent, and as tricky as he is, and as unpredictable he is, or was, he's too predictable. Every single time, gets the ball left hand side, cuts in on cuts his right in. hand side. Cuts Never. In. The game against City, he was going outside. He was he was going all over the place, and he was making Kyle Walker think. Every other game, just cuts inside onto his right foot. Maybe beats a man or two, and then just shoots an erratic shot wide or high. And it's just it's got to the point now. Listen, mate, you're not the one-man band where it's just you and Wilson winning games for it as a, and you're a maverick playing under Steve Bruce. We've got a cohesive team structure that you're either part of or you're not. And yeah. for me, he's not part of it. I don't want to... I sound like I'm properly throwing him under the bus. And I, I suppose yeah, I am yeah. to an extent. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, is, he is putting in the graft a bit more. Yeah. I will give him that. He's putting in the graft a bit more. The, the equaliser we've got against Bournemouth... You know, a, a pass came to him and he proper slid in and went for it and kept the ball in and went through. There's been a couple of times where he's ran back as the last man to make a bit of a, a, a save and tackle. But I just see it too often in games. You know, he'll play on the left with Joe Linton as a left centre mid backing him up. And too often Joe Linton's the one pressing and Sam Maximan loses the man. Okay. And the problem we've got and why I was saying earlier I'm not so sure about Dan Byrne is... Dan Burns playing left back at the minute. He doesn't have the pace to play left back, mm. nor the attacking now. But the problem is when San Maximan's on the left, Dan Byrne needs all the cover in the world. Yeah. And Joe Linton and Joe Willock give him Can't that cover. That. Right. Whereas San Maximan, nah, Joe Linton on his own. Trouble. Yeah, exactly. The game against Bournemouth, all their all their best attacks came down that left hand that right hand side for them. Yeah, Dan Burns side. And mm. that was Okay. Yeah, it's I, I get that, get up there. So yeah, no, look, so it feels good? It feels great, and we'll fo I guess I've focused a lot on players, haven't I? But I've, just, it's, it's I've just got to go to Eddie Howe, though, because yeah. 
And part of the reason probably why he didn't get an Everton job at the point as well was when he finished off at Bournemouth, um, he took a year out of football, yeah. or a year and a bit out of football, I can't remember exactly how long. And what this is what this is what I love about him, and this is why I think he's mint, is he basically looked at himself at Bournemouth and went, What did, what did I do wrong? What what you know, what what was the reason Bournemouth went wrong? And he put a lot of that responsibility on himself. Um and he was like, my record in the transfer market wasn't great, my defensive record wasn't great. Hence why when he was brought in, everyone was saying, well, Newcastle just ship loads of goals, they shipped defensively. Why have you brought in Eddie Howe, the man who can't coach a defence? Look at Winnow, best mm. defensive record, not just in the Premier League, in all five leagues across Europe. Really? Least goals conceded, really? most, cl most clean sheets. Okay. And where did he pick that up? Arsenal fans will probably be all too familiar with this because they've seen firsthand what what we will do when the player doesn't go our way. He spent about six weeks or so with Simeone at Atletico Madrid mm. and he just picked up the dark arts. How to become absolute Did shit really? absolute shit houses and how to be you know, how to be difficult to beat. Like we are just That's oh, amazing that. Yeah. That's me. I didn't know that. So He's he's reached out or, or whatever to Simeone, and basically shadow him among amongst yeah am, amongst other things done done quite a bit more than that but that that was kind of the main thing that struck out. I think the biggest thing is the fact that he can sort of identify his own weaknesses at the it's time and have that own honesty with that's himself just to be able to say this is what I didn't do so well this is what I'm going to do it really is and yeah. on the transfer yeah. side of things he's brought in a team around him to help that's assist like, in that regard that as well. Is, zero ego isn't it yeah he's got he's got zero ego to to take that you know to lose the job at Bournemouth and just be like I'm good enough to go straight back in sorry to mention it but Jesse Marsh for example to he lost your job last week week before and he's looking at going straight back in yeah to a struggling side Leeds job why I think that's the perfect thing to do is to go away and be like look let's take a little time here because he's not skint doesn't surely he doesn't need the job, you know, he's not skinned. So take a little time, what went wrong, address it all, and come back a much stronger person, a much stronger coach, manager, that ultimately makes you much stronger for the club you're taking over. And that team, the fans, everyone's gonna love you. You know, it's yeah. Or you could or you set yourself on another hide than to nothing. Go straight into another job. I didn't know that, that he'd gone over to, to like um Madrid and Done stuff like that. Yeah, that's really, it's just really interesting, really good to know. I think, like you say, just as a person, just to be able to identify your own your own weaknesses and just be able to face them honestly, tackle them, and then to see, you know, to do what he's doing now yeah, is yeah. just. I think it's just a testament to him as a character, the fact that he was able to go away and do that, and then come back and see whatever he's doing now, it bloody works. And I think that's that's also part of the reason why as well. Um, it's mindset is the biggest thing to him. When we're signing, was when we're signing a player, we're not just signing them based on ability. We're signing them based on mindset and their ability to fit in the dressing room. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And how they're going to work for a team. And and one of one of the things as well actually is um, he does a big thing about building team spirit. And it's just things like this people just wouldn't think twice of at all. One of the biggest things he does to build team spirit is every single week he gets a player to stand up in front of the team. And basically tell the life story. Really? Yeah, and it's like see you know see your teammate not just as someone on the pitch, see them as a person. And it's like when you go out on the pitch, you're like a family, and you'll fight for each other. I, I can I can see that I can see that I think that reminds me of the way Leicester Leicester were that mad that season they won. It was yeah. it was like they were they were playing for each other so much. You could see every game they went out. You could just see it in them. They chased every ball down. They done everything for each other. Yeah, absolutely. One of their teammates were in trouble. They were there. You know, they were backed up, and yeah, it was good. And like you, you can see that in this Newcastle team. You can, bastards, man. <laughs> it's fucking great. Uh, so, will where do you think you're gonna finish this season? Um, where do I think we'll finish this season? Um. I would love to say we'll finish top four. Mm. I think it's plausible. Mm. Um, do I think it'll definitely happen? No. Um, I think top six is probably our mo we're most likely um, sort of finishing position remit. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I've got to be honest and say I would take I would take top eight if we won the cup. If we didn't win the cup, I'd I'd want to take top 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 six, I suppose. I don't know. I'm 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 not you're, I'm you're not sound opinion. I'm not sounding very committal to anything at all. To be you're, honest, you're my opinion. Yeah, go I on. Think, I think you'll finish exactly where you are now. I think you'll finish fourth. I think I and I'm, I'm saying that because of these teams below you. Um, you've definitely got it in you to win. Probably just as many or slightly fewer games than Liverpool. I think Liverpool are your biggest threat, even though they're here. These teams, again, with respect, I'm just being realistic in my opinion, Spurs are too inconsistent. They're more inconsistent than Newcastle. Uh, Brighton, yeah, Brighton are a good team, as we both said. They're, they're potentially already over, overachieving a, a, just slightly. So are Fulham, so are Brentford. Liverpool are underachieving, so are Chelsea. But I think Chelsea will underachieve. I think your biggest threat is going to be Liverpool climbing this table and finishing about fifth. Um, I think you'll keep it safe from Liverpool. I think you'll I think you'll get there. Spurs will take more losses, especially on their um Conte. Um I'm not I'm not hundred percent he's a good fifth for them. No, I'm I'm not either, although I don't really know what is a good I don't fit know for what them. is. I think they're I, I think they're a mess, I think they're all over the place and I think they have been for a very long time. So, I genuinely if, I'm not particularly worried about Liverpool. Liverpool. Are you not? On just just based on this season's form, if if they beat us on the weekend though, that that'll take Liverpool six points behind us. Yeah. We have got a far superior goal difference. They'll have a game in hand as well. Yes, they'll have a game in hand. Yeah, I I, I see where you're coming from actually with Liverpool. If they've managed... also got, I'm sorry to do this to you. I think they've got Van Dijk back, um, Canate back, and I think there might be somebody else that you've got back, but. Uh, it doesn't, you know it doesn't matter I, I because might have Lewis Diaz back. Unle I'm not unless sure they, Lewis Diaz might be further out, but unless they can score goals, our you're right. Your we'll, defense will nil nil. You're confident in your defense. We'll, 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 we'll nil nil. I love them. that. We'll get we'll, another draw. We'll nil nil. Five, five <laughs> draws, five draws, and six we're no gonna, problem. We're gonna nil nil you all day. Yeah, I'll, 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 I've got to be honest and say oh, at this that. point, I'll. I'd, Take a draw as much as I, as much just, as I want to get revenge for the game it. at Anfield this season. I'd take a draw. Just um, bring it, Will. As nil, pissed nil, off nil. as I am with seeing us draw so many games, I'd take a draw. Love yeah. it, love it. So there, there you know, honestly, it's just it's just these in between. I think you'll I I think you're safe with these in between. The Spurs might at some point jump above, but I do think you'll by the by the end. I think you for example, if Spurs win this weekend, then you don't. They'll jump above, but then I think Spurs will lose the next two, something like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I, I think I think you'll 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 do it. Um, we're gonna finish. Um, if you don't mind, do you think you win the cup? You've got to say yeah. Do I'm. You can't I'm, say we'll nil nil. I'm so. I'm so we'll oh, nil nil. I wouldn't trust one penalties. Um, you so you sound just, like if I if I had a Liverpool fan in here, if I had Ben in here again, Ben would be like. Yeah. Without hesitation. And you know where that is because it's like it's it's they're a drunk, successful it's club. Then something last. Yeah. If we had a, if we had a City fan, in, yeah, of course we will. Probably United, Arsenal, Chelsea fan would still even though Chelsea down here they probably still say yeah without doubt. You are more like an Everton fan. You're more like one of us. Honestly, if you ask me if we were going to win a cup, we were in it. I'd be like, oh, sure. I'd, I'd react like you. I'd be like, yeah. oh no, I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> I just I don't want to jinx anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, 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 I'll tell you what, I've got absolute faith in this Newcastle team on a game to beat anybody. Good. Yeah. I'm just worried. Obviously, Rashford is the biggest threat. Casemiro looks good, yeah. but Newcastle have got Bruno coming back, and if yeah. if Wilson's back and fit. And fire, and I think him and Isaac together could be a real pair. I would drop San Maximan again altogether. <laughs> I um, know you would. I get that. <laughs> I'd, I'd, He's I'd, coming to Everton next season. Um, I think that Isaac is going to be a class player. You know. Yeah. I think he's going to be a class player. I think if he bulks up a little bit as well, like yeah, just, he could do yeah. being a bit stronger. But then you look at the likes of um, you compare him to to the build of like to Crouch and that you know big yeah. big tall. Finn, mate, listen, it didn't do crouch any... No, no, it didn't. And I'll tell you what, his, his debut against Liverpool, he sat 
Trent and Van Dyke down made them look like Muppets. Um, yeah. He's got some serious, serious ability. Yeah. Um, I think a run of games is probably the most important thing it is. for him at this it point. Is. Of course it is, yeah, that'll change it. Right, we're going to finish um, part three there. We did have the European Super League, but we've gone for far too long. We're going to jump to the weekend fixtures. European Super League coming up next week. Tell you what we'll do, dead quick, European Super League. But bunch of crap or what? Aye, bunch of crap. Same, same. Sack it off. Yeah, sack it off. Yeah, it reared its ugly head again this week. That's what I'm going to touch on. But listen, they just they they reared their ugly head because of the city thing. They just want Premier League money. I'll touch on it next week with uh with our next fan. Somebody wants to come on and talk about the European Super League next week. Let's go for it. Uh, Dan, me and you jump to the weekend fixtures. Right. But as I say, part part four of this we had to we had to leave the European Super League. Um, so we're gonna look at the weekend's fixtures, give our predictions, free rights from me and Paul last week. What I'll start doing, in fact, I'll start doing it. Uh, me and Paul, it wasn't that's alive. Me and Ben, I don't know who Paul is. Um, what we're go- what I'll start doing is keeping a track, and I'll do me versus the guests, and put how many I get compared to the guests. Okay, so I started from Ben's last week. I'll tell you that up. And uh, I'll have it here for next week. So, you're going to be in red. I'm going to be in blue. Villa, Arsenal. Uh, so, on Emery's return to his old club. Oh, good points. I'm going to go for Villa 1. And dare I say, Arsenal 2. Go on, I've just got to go with Arsenal, given right. the league positions. Right, so he's gone Arsenal 2, Villa 1. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go 2-1 Villa. I just, as I've said, I can see I can see Arsenal starting to struggle and I'm just going to stick with it. I'm going to go 2-1 Villa. Is it an early kickoff as well? It is, that's well, the that's the Oh, the early kickoff yeah. curse. He could be on something there. We'll yeah. see. I'll stick with Arsenal. Sticking with it. Yeah. Brentford Palace. Um, Brentford seem to have a great turn of results against bigger sides. Oh, okay. I think but against teams that they're expected to beat, they tend to be a little bit iffy. I think Palace are a really, really difficult side to break down, so I'm going to go for 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Now I'm going to go I'm going to go another 2-1 for Brentford. I'm going to go, I think, Ivan Tony scoring. I think Ivan Tony will get 2 as well. I think it's going to be 2-1 Brentford and Ivan Tony's going to get 2. Depends how much money he's got on it. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah, good one, yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> Thanks. I'm about to edit that in, <laughs> all across the bottom. Um, Brighton Fulham. Brighton Fulham, ooh. That's a good game, That's that, a it? good game, that is a good game. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to go 1-1. I just, I just can't, I can't separate the two teams. I think Brighton, although they're a better footballing team, I just think they lack like that cutting edge. And I think Fulham and Mitrovic are just always capable of getting a goal. Yeah. So yeah, one one. One one. I'm going to go one nil, Brighton. I agree with you. I just can't. There's, there's, not much, there's not much between them, is there? No, there's not. No, there's not. There's not. Chelsea, Southampton. Ah, just this. Uh, this depends, I think, a big, uh, quite largely on whether or not Southampton have a new manager in place. Um, just in terms of having that little bit of a, little bit of a bounce. Yeah. Um, because Chelsea probably are probably fine by the time. So this goes out at team time, tea time tomorrow. What will happen is. Jesse Marsh will be appointed tomorrow day, then tea times where everyone's going to, everybody will watch this and we're going, whether he's got a manager or not, is he appointed, and he already is. But anyway, yeah. go on. I'm going to go 1-0 Chelsea. Oh yeah, so, for me, right, I'm going to go big. I think Chelsea, is. this is going to be the game where they might manage to put something together as a team. And I'm going to go for a 4-0. 4-0, wow. Yeah, I'm going to go 4-0. As Pilaqueta 4. <laughs> <laughs> Is he captain in your fantasy team? <laughs> no. Um, Everton leads. Oh. Everton leads. 
Leeds have got who was manager now? Nobody. No, no, and they're not a point one either. Not a point no. one. They've said they're not a point one for the for the foreseeable games. I think I'm gonna go home advantage for Everton. I think I'm gonna see this as a as Everton eking out a one nil. A one nil shit house Sean Dice special. <laughs> uh, I think I will go two one Everton. Gotta stick with Everton, haven't I? But I, I honestly think we'll we'll get I think we have to win our home games, I think we can win our home games. Lee Strong without a manager, but we we will probably concede unfortunately. Um go on, Nottingham Forest, Man City. Nottingham Forest. Looking good at the minute, actually. The put, you know, the the pulling together and stringing together a few good results and stuff. City obviously just got too much in the tank for yeah. them. Um, one goal for Forest, three for City. Yeah. And I think I'm being kind of Forest there, to be honest. But in the fact that they'll get a goal, I'm going to copy. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Three one City. Yeah. I think, as we said earlier, is this the turning point? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Wolves, Bournemouth. Wolves, Wolves look good mm. under their new manager, mm. Lopetegui, if I've yeah. got his name right. Bournemouth look pretty good under Gary O'Neill. This is just, it's, 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 low, it's low goals all over it. And I'm going to go 1-0 Wolves. You're a 1-0 man, aren't you? I think they're going to eat out a 1-0, yeah. Check this one out. I'm going to go 3-2. Wow. Wolves. <laughs> I've got no basis for it. I'm just. It's always an anomaly. I'm just having a go. I'm just having a go. Uh, Newcastle, Liverpool. Nil, nil. But yeah, you're going <laughs> nil, to go nil, for I'm it. I'm going nil, nil. We're going to nil, nil you. We're going to nil, nil you. Oh, Dan, Dan. I didn't even need to think about that. Uh, you, I don't think you're going to like me, you know. I think I'm going to go for a 2 1 Liverpool. Sorry, mate. No, um, I'm not. Oh, sorry, mate. They're not going to score two. Oh, fucking hell, I'll say that and then they'll score two. Yeah, they could score two. I'm, trying to, give, I'm trying to give them the kiss of death here. <laughs> um, no, I think they looked they looked okay against us. I think it might have given them a boost. And like you've said, you boys are struggling a bit to score. I think this might be the one, I said before in the league, this might be the one where we go down to Spurs in a minute, where you might switch this weekend. But then ultimately else it's gonna switch back. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Howe's team talk factored in. This is the only loss we've had this season. You know, go and get go and get it back. Could be that. Late yeah. late kick off, you know, fifty two thousand piss Geordies behind them in, in a late kick off. I'll be one of them as well. Yeah, good for you. Um so I I'm um I'm I'm looking forward to that. We'll we'll see what happens. i like I say, I'll take a draw. I think it'll be a draw, but if we win Happy days. Yeah. Happy, we, we need to get back on the winning trail if we're going to have any hope of finishing top four. Agree with you. United Leicester? 3 1 Man U, I think. I'd love Leicester to beat them and just give them a little bit of a. Just a little bit of a. You better friggin' fear Newcastle next weekend. You're not you're yeah. not all that, you know what I mean? The inconsistent Man United. I if don't that, want them if getting, that happened, if that did happen. With the fact that if if mine if Liverpool were to get a result at your place, but then Leicester beat Man U, then yeah, it's that's, okay. Isn't that's it? not too, it's not too bad. I just yeah, I think I'd, I'd just like to see from a purely selfish point of view. I'd just like to see Leicester get yeah. get another result over them and just sort of bring them bring them back down to earth and make them fear us just a little bit more. Hopefully, as much as I. Love having Rashford in my fantasy team, just keeping him out and just yeah, basically yeah. making him realise that he's human. Yeah. Yeah. Spurs West Ham? Um, whenever Spurs play West Ham in a London derby, I just can't ever see past Harry Kane just doing the business. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go for Spurs 2 0. I'm going to go for a 3 1. Spurs. Yeah, I was. It, I was. I can't see spares. Between the I two can't see spares losing that one. Nah. But, but I say I, I can't see it. It also wouldn't surprise me if they did. It's it's that's Premier League football for you. It's Spurs, but yeah, I, Spurs against West Ham in particular. 
their record against West Ham, I think, I'm not a great expert, but I think their record yeah, against West Ham is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I might get, no, especially yeah. around the world. I'm I sure. might get Kane to be fantasy sure team this weekend, I think, actually. Guys, we're going to finish it up there. Um, that was my That Weekly Football Show, speaking to Dan, the Newcastle fan. Dan, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks we've for had a few. Us. We've had a few Newcastle Brown Ales as well. You've seen the scores here. If we get them right and you put the bets on, remember where we are. Um, as I said, I've got the Everton top up there, donated by Mark. I've got a Wrexham one on the way. If anybody wants to send any tops or anything to get up there, feel free. Other than that, guys, this video has gone on. What are we on now? This video has gone on for very long. Um, if you're still here watching, thank you very much. Okay, um, I'll see you next week. Man City fans, love to get a Man City fan on. What else we got? Um, I'd love to get, you know, any... Any Premier League fan, any football fan, do you know what, you don't have to be a Premier League fan, any football fan at all, um, but it'd be great to have a City fan, because I'd, I'd, I'd love to talk about what's going on with uh, with the allegations against City at the moment, uh, but yeah, any fan, you want to get on, give me a shout, um, other than that guys, we'll leave it there, thanks very much for watching, that was my weekly football show, say bye Dan. Cheers. <laughs> Take care.